Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Shadow Strays, an Indonesian action thriller from 2024 that was directed by Timo Tujanto. Codename 13, a 17-year-old trained assassin known as a Shadow, is part of an international organization of assassins. On a mission in Japan, she successfully assassinates her primary target, the leader of a criminal clan. However, 13 is dazed after accidentally killing a bystander and is incapacitated. Umbra, her mentor, eliminates the rest of the clan and rescues her. Umbra reprimands 13 for her lapse in focus and puts her under suspension for a psych retraining in Jakarta. But during her suspension, she meets 11-year-old Monji, who loses his mother, and she sets out to rescue him. So the Shadow Strays begins with a pretty fantastic, lengthy action set piece. Now this scene takes place in a snowy Japanese residence that is located in a forest area. Our protagonist and her crew go all out attack mode on these Japanese bodyguards. And the first kill of the film is pretty nasty right off the bat, which tells you that this movie is going to be very bloody for an action flick. I mean, no surprise given the director, right? Now weaponry mostly focuses on swords and guns with some very precise action choreography. Uh, the head bodyguard near the beginning is a pretty cool character, and he puts up quite a fight. Uh, now, the camera does move a lot during the action, but it's still relatively easy to see everything that's happening, which I can appreciate here. This is an impressive opening sequence. Definitely the correct way to start an action movie, and I did get excited, all right? Now, at that point, I knew what was going to come next in this film. Now, I saw the two-hour and 25-minute runtime, and I predicted 30 minutes of dull filler to finish Act 1. And that's exactly what we get here. Uh, the lead protagonist in this film, in all honesty, has no personality whatsoever, and also no multidimensionality at all. Like, there's nothing to this character, and she has no charisma, all right? She can move well, though. Also, I did not care about this kid at all, He's some random child who has a crappy childhood. Like, whatever, you know. Um, this is my biggest criticism of the film, as you might expect. And in my opinion, they should have eliminated the kid character entirely, given the lead protagonist a few scenes to show some personality. And they should have shortened the runtime and simply kept things moving with the assassin conflicts. Uh, assassin slash criminal conflicts, in my opinion. So if I have to choose between, like, no character development or boring character development in an action movie i'm choosing no character development you know what i mean just uh just keep things moving you know what i mean but for some reason action movies nowadays need to be two and a half hours like all the time you know which is a, a pet peeve of mine i don't i, I don't like this uh, trend but anyway thankfully after act one ends the pacing picks up again and there's a bunch of action to compensate for the rest of the film okay so Plenty of bloody violence and deaths incorporated into these scenes as well. Uh, near the 50-minute mark, we get a few fights inside of like a neon-lit nightclub. Now, another criticism I have is that sometimes I think the lighting is just a little bit too dark for my liking. Just a little bit too dark. You can still see stuff, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a little bit... Uh, I think they should have brightened up the sets a bit during some of the fights. Still good stuff, though, and I like how our protagonist uses enemies as human shields to avoid getting blasted by shotguns. That was pretty cool. And uh, there's a particular side character who likes her shotgun, and she shows up multiple times. Uh, we get a solid one-on-one -on -one sword fight inside of a small hut where a subplot emerges. And then there's a shootout fight in an alleyway in residence. Fun stuff, all right? We get some huge set pieces during the final act, though. The first, or the next big one, I, sh I guess I should say, is this shootout in a huge warehouse. It involves two gangs and our protagonist. So there's multiple, uh, I guess, uh, uh, entities at play here. It's pretty high octane. Effective use of automatic weapons, shotguns, swi squibs, collateral damage in the form of cars and other, like, uh, uh, environmental type stuff. There's a dude in a white shoe who shows up, and he's sufficiently unhinged and helps to add energy to that scene. And then that scene just rolls right into the finale, 
which is uh, a multi-phase scene with multiple one-on-one fights. One against like this huge dude, and another one against a smaller, faster lady. And it gets violent, nasty, wince-worthy. It's a slugfest to the death in both cases. And uh, our protagonist suffers a lot of damage during those scenes. So it's, you know, pretty satisfying stuff, all right? So I would say despite some pacing issues during Act 1... The Shadow Strays is a solidly entertaining action flick. And I, even though I would not rank this as high as like The Night Comes For Us or something like that, it's totally worth watching if you're into modern Indonesian action flicks. So I do recommend this quite strongly, actually. Currently streaming on Netflix. And as always, I'll see you next time.